hello to everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, being here. It's a pleasure to be part of this uh, conference. So, um, I will speak of uh, federalism, or uh, more precisely, the federalist principle, as, it, uh, as we can see it in the works of uh, Kasturiadis, and more specifically in his most uh, more visionary type of writings. Um, so, um, uh, today, um, there is this uh, understanding, a mainstream understanding, that uh, democracy, in its direct, uh, genuine sense, it's uh, something that can work on small scale. Of course, this comes uh, dates back to Rousseau, for example, who says that democracy is suitable for a small state where the people can assemble easily and uh, it's uh, not hard for each citizen to know all the rest. Uh, and so uh, the narrative goes that um, there, when we speak of large-scale complex societies, uh, there, is, there are two options. It, there, there is a totalitarian type of auction, uh, and then there is a parliamentarian representative type of regimes uh, where there are, um, are more uh, freedoms, but uh, nonetheless uh, direct participation is uh, not uh, allowed. There is no space for uh, direct participation. And of course, this narrative uh, is not, uh, uh, is being internalized by also some of the critics of the system. For example, the hippie movement, some of it uh, um, uh, internalized this logic and uh, tried to make like uh, self sustainable, isolated communes uh, to try to save themselves from society. And of course, many of them ended up uh, in a disastrous way. And uh, with the financial crisis uh, of 2008, for example, many uh, people also critical of the system uh, th took this approach of uh, escapism type of uh, leaving cities and going uh, for outer key in uh, isolated villages, etc. Um, and uh, Castoriadis uh, goes contrary to all these three logics. And he suggests that there is a, a different uh, um, approach that can make direct democracy feasible on a social, societal scale uh, as the political regime of a whole society. And the realization of this uh, depends only upon the lucid activity of individuals and people, upon their understanding, their will, and their imagination. So uh, there, there is a twofold uh, approach of Castoriadis. On, um, and the argumentation on why the federalist principle is important. On the one hand, um, uh, for Castoriadis, uh, the federalist principle is what makes um, uh, the direct democracy feasible on uh, uh, the scale of millions and we can suggest even billions of people. Uh, there is also a, a second layer of the argumentation that Castoriadis gives in favor of this, and I think this is very crucial and important for us, is that um, in uh, isolated societies, historically speaking, like uh, Castoriadis say, uh, the very isolation of one society, of one community, uh, makes it impossible for uh, its uh, members to challenge the institutions and the dominant uh, significations, and uh, which by its nature represents the bearer of closure. And um, the closure, the closeness of a community, a community that is self-isolating itself, um, uh, it, 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 uh, it renders it impossible to think uh, beyond the, the dominant significations and to challenge them. Um, so for Castoriadis, it's very important that uh, there is a, a multi-communal bondage, uh, that there is uh, interconnectedness relations between various types of communities, and uh, this allows for ideas to travel, new civic significations to appear in different parts, and so we can uh, think beyond uh, always the dominant significations and when we deem it necessary we can challenge them. So for him this is very important and I think it's uh, very important for us today. Uh, we have seen the logic of uh, closure for example uh, coming from the uh, right. Um, it is a logic that promotes uh, nationalism, 
It's a disastrous logic. Um, so at the basis of um, uh, Castoriadis' uh, like more practical writings on direct democracy are the self-governing units that are up to 100,000 people, uh, which is the size of an average city uh, or a neighborhood of a large uh, metropolitan area or like a couple of villages g g gathered together. Uh, for him, this is the level that people can gather and uh, decide collectively via pu public assembly. Um, and uh, for him, uh, this is the level uh, that will have highest authority. And uh, why there is a need, uh, for example, to establish public assemblies uh, in a specific uh, area and not, for example, to conduct a... Uh, uh, direct democracy, which to be digital, and for example, engage everyone uh, uh, through a digital uh, medium to decide on everything around the world. Castoriadis is very uh, specific on that. He says that direct democracy requires the physical presence of a citizen in a given place uh, when decisions uh, have to be made. But this is on its own not enough. It also requires that these citizens form an organic community, that they live, if possible, in the same milieu, that they uh, are familiar through their da daily experience with the subject to be discussed and with the problems to be tackled. Uh, so we, uh, he was very critical with this concept of uh, kind of uh, uh, direct democracy via telephone lines, something that uh, is very popular uh, today among some more uh, liberal type of circles. And uh, if we look how uh, this type of democracy being framed by them, there is a lot of uh, kind of shopping terminology. So it's very easy. You can do it from your chair. You won't uh, waste time. You, with several clicks, you have decided on uh, different things. Um, it takes all the burden that politics is and should be and all the patience that you have to have as a citizen and all the responsibility from being active on a daily basis and taking time to participate in an assembly and doing it into a type of irresponsible consumer as uh, the project of capitalism uh, is promoting. So uh, this is the basic level of uh, Castoriadis' uh, idea of how demo direct democracy will work. From this, um, th they start emerging uh, uh, federal structures that, that try to uh, coordinate and not rule over these communities. They coordinate these self-managed uh, units. Um, and it's, uh, it's what uh, Castoriadis called here central power, a central level of power, which, however, he is uh, making it sure that um, uh, it works to decentralize instead of centralize uh, authority. Um, and uh, it's very important here to make distinction between, for example, the Assembly of Councils, uh, one federal Assembly of Councils, as the one envisioned by Castoriadis, and the parliaments of today. Because many um, who criticize such projects in bad faith say that, okay, we have something similar today, we have the parliament. So one of the main differences that Castoriadis says is um, that, first of all, the, such federal structures does not take decisions, but they implement decisions taken from the gr uh, ground up. And secondly, the people that consist of stru structures are not representatives of the people, they are delegates. So in a sense, they are recallable at any moment. Uh, they have to give feedback to the communities and they usually have much shorter mandates. So there is a form of popular control. Fl uh, power flows bottom up. Uh, Castoriadis also suggests that uh, supp supplementary to these structures, um, uh, plebiscites or referendums can be used so that uh, 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 can be less burdensome the process. So, for example, the application of a federal law can be decided via referendum by all the federated communities. There is no need for going over uh, back and forward with uh, this. Already, it presupposes that local com communal assemblies will have uh, created a common opinion, so people will be informed and they'll. Uh, take decision. There is also an important element here that uh, I'll go in a little more in depth with a concrete example from our time, is that Castoriadis in uh, one of his works suggests that um, uh, such type of uh, federal stateless uh, democracy uh, will contribute greatly to a peaceful and harmonious coexistence between a mixture of diverse populations. 
and more specifically he, he speaks uh, this uh, when referring to the uh, breakup of Yugoslavia and uh, all these massacres uh, that followed uh, Uh, in this Moscow's praxis that we saw in the rise of uh, the chauvinism and nationalism around the Balkans. Um, he says that, uh, uh, that today uh, society is based on statecraft, that is of nation states, um, identificatory passions and uh, mutual myths are created that uh, promote uh, decisive stereotypes, obstruct democratic participation, etc. So uh, instead of this, you have these plur uh, uh, communities self-managing themselves, which uh, in a way promotes uh, a much uh, greater pl pluralism. There is no uh, a bureaucratic incentive to create a homogeneous whole For example, like what is taking place in Ukraine, that there is uh, this effort now to create a, a nation, which means one common language, means one common identity. On the other hand, the example that I'll analyze a bit more further, it's ANS, the Autonomous Administration of Northeast Syria, or uh, Rojava, where uh, this uh, uh, ethnic pl plurality is being sustained exactly because each of these different communities self-manages itself. There is no need for a common, let's say, Kurdish identity. There is no need of one common religious identity. All this is being sustained on the local level where these communities experience these uh, identities. And furthermore, there is one uh, more problem that Kastriadi suggests that can be uh, solved by uh, uh, the means of such a federated type of direct democracy, is the antinomy of the contemporary uh, system. Uh, it's well known that Castoriadis is very critical that uh, in the contemporary bureaucratic capitalist uh, uh, systems uh, uh, there is this constant uh, strive at turning people into uh, machines that uh, implement dec decisions that are taken somewhere else from them. And these uh, machines do not have access to the spaces where decisions are being made. Um, there is a, a kind of a similar argument made by David Greber uh, in his book, Utopia of Rules, where uh, he says that uh, uh, the rules in states in, within capitalism are made with the active knowledge that they will not uh, cover all uh, human activity, and there is always a space of uh, initiative, of individual initiative, and the system counts on this initiative. Like we, it's very famous uh, what uh, Castoriadi says, that if you make uh, a, this type of uh, strike uh, where you act only by the book, by the rules, and you don't uh, in, uh, do initiatives when you see that it's not enough, uh, uh, the system will crumble. Um, so there is this uh, thing that is uh, rediscovered in a way by Greber. Um, And so uh, Castriadis believes that uh, because this antinomy is reproduced in, in all uh, spheres of uh, life. So in uh, the way that we form our relationships, in the, way, in the places where we work. So it's very important uh, that um, uh, this federalist principle is applied also in uh, connecting all these spheres uh, together. Because one of the things of uh, bureaucratic uh, systems like the capitalist one, Uh, don't forget, capitalism promotes via, uh, its narrative that it is kind of anti-bureaucratic, it's ultra-individualist. Uh, Rancière have argued that uh, actually capitalism, or neoliberalism, the worst form of capitalism, is uh, the most total and absolute form of bureaucracy. As we see um, specific types of, of lifestyle, of thinking, being reproduced on global scale that is worthy of, uh, let's say, Orwellian novel, something that we haven't seen in a, a much more authoritarian system. So, um, uh, and one of its powers is that it detaches different spheres. Uh, so politics is detached from economy, uh, economy is detached from culture, etc. or Uh, but all of this is being subjugated to the logic of uh, endless economic growth, serving profit, etc. So uh, Castoriadis suggests that all these spheres should be reconnected via a federalist type of uh, politics. And uh, he finds uh, an inspiration for uh, this vision of his, this uh, idea, uh, in the French Revolution, where uh, specifically I 
copy the passage from here, where he says, uh, in the French Revolution, we have a fantastic labor of explicit self-institution by society, the equivalent of which I am unfamiliar with uh, anywhere else. Within this process, the federation seems to be the of decisive importance. The country showed its will to reinstitute itself by putting itself back together on the basis of its natural element, or what seems to be such the local com uh, communities. So once again, we see the local communities start to self-organizing and they try to federate with each other. The federation is a magnificent <coughs> symbol of the eruption of instituting process and its self-symbolization. All that goes to constitute the revolution's fecund period. Then, as it is known, the people began an account of a certain number of factors, and not because uh, this would be an internal inev inevitability within every revolution, to withdraw from the stage, and even the Paris did so. So he was, uh, he takes his inspiration uh, from the self-organization of local communities, the creation of federation, but then he rec uh, recognizes that there is a uh, period of depolitization and people withdrawing back from the political stage and allowing uh, more authoritarian forms to uh, take back. So uh, I will go uh, first because I would like to cover some uh, similarities with uh, the project of Bookchin, but I'll go first of all to the ANES uh, project because I find it more topical and important today. And if I have time, I'll uh, speak about Bookchin. So what we have today in the Middle East, uh, that is today being called ANES, Autonomous Administration of Northeast Syria, uh, or more, more commonly known as Rojava, which is the Kurdish term of uh, uh, this area, uh, has been constituted since the Arabic Spring on, uh, a, something, on a system that is called democratic confederalism. Of this system, the, the most uh, important decision-making body is called the commune, which uh, is based on living quarters, uh, places where people will actually live, that are up to 350 families. Um, and uh, a one representative uh, from the movement of society, uh, democratic society, a, a Kurdish group that is active there, says the value of a commune signature under a document is more important than a, a, min a signature of a minister. So he wants to suggest that uh, all power, the most important power, lays in these communes where uh, people that live together, that they're familiar with their common problems, they will make decisions. And then there are several levels, uh, 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 confederal levels. There is the people houses, uh, which, to, uh, which are attended by representatives of several communes. Uh, one example that I found is the, in the canton of Camishlo. Uh, there are 97 communes uh, who meet at seven people's houses. So there is one people's house uh, per approximately 13 communities. And then... Uh, again, on the communal level, elections are taking place and delegates are being sent to city councils, which cover a, a citywide level. And then uh, there is also the legislative assembly and the public council of, on the communal level. Uh, and on this level, also people, are, uh, delegates are sent to the, um, uh, the federal assembly of all of Rojava. Um, it's important to say that uh, all laws that are being taken on a can canton level have to take a signature of approval back to the communal level, to, back to the communal assembly. So again, we see that uh, the local uh, autonomy, uh, local sovereignty is not being neglected, but furthermore is being um, promoted. Um, there are indications that there is revocability of delegates although uh, there is not a lot of uh, seen in, in practice. Uh, one criticism that I can personally uh, give uh, to this model is that uh, almost all positions in these higher uh, federative uh, institutions are filled by party members. So uh, we know from Castoriadis that he was highly critical of political parties. He says that they are prone to uh, charismatism, that is politics stepping back and giving place to charismatic figures, and also to bureaucratism. So in a sense, although these uh, people that go there are supposed to be delegates of local institution, uh, institutional bodies, um, they can also act promoting specific party line. So there is a, a criticism uh, that I personally have, uh, but of course this is a, a, a revolution in a process, in movement, so there is, it needs our critical support that uh, the, the positive elements, the democratic elements are encouraged. 
Um, I would also like to uh, underline something that uh, is common between Kasturiadis and Bukchin alike uh, when uh, speaking of confederal or federal type of uh, uh, societies is that they are of a binding character. So both Kasturiadis and Bukchin speak of uh, uh, mutual agreements, uh, restrictive agreements or constitutions. Uh, in one way or another. So there is this problem, for example, in anarchy circles that we envision such uh, uh, federations of a kind of very loosely based, where if one community disagree with something, she, she could uh, just continue uh, doing something else. Uh, but uh, Bukchin and Castoriadi suggest that uh, this could, for example, lead to human rights violation, to ecological, environmental degradation uh, inflicted by some rogue communities, let's say. So what is needed is the democratic process that will determine a common frame, a constitution, let's say, uh, and that there will be certain procedural uh, in, uh, processes that will imply to such specific constitutional agreements that will make it a bit more difficult than any other type of law or uh, decision to be changed. Like Australia say, uh, France on its own had multiple constitutions that have become uh, uh, paper in the garbage can. Of course, every constitution is prone to change, no matter how absolute it is. Uh, but it is important to make it at least a bit more difficult so that it can endure uh, the craziness. But as Castoriadis uh, uh, have said char characteristically, no one can prevent society from uh, inflicting bad to itself to self-destruct. If society falls into a collective madness, it can uh, do it. Um, and finally, uh, in an interview that he speaks about the creation of a democratic Europe along these uh, lines and what we have seen today, something similar take place in Rojava today, he says that one of the main obstacles to such thing is that uh, tremendous persistence of the imaginary of the nation state that exists in uh, Europe. While the Kurdish people and many of these communities there have been excluded for uh, decades uh, they, they have never been uh, included uh, within uh, the framework of a, a nation state, that, a welfare nation state that treats them. We in Europe have been uh, embedded in this, our imaginaries, and this will be the main challenge to think beyond this and to try to implement something more direct democratic, something more plur pluralist in the, uh, to the road to social individual autonomy. Thank you very much. Gracias. 
Okay. So on the multi-level change that you reflected upon, I agree completely. It's uh, in in a way, I think that uh, po politics should uh, regain, in one such approach, should regain its rightful place as, uh, let's say, uh, the top uh, layer of. Uh, in society, generally, uh, it should uh, take it back away from economy, which today is uh, uh, the, the ruling, let's say, uh, economism, to be more correct, to be more uh, to, to coin a term from Polanyi. Uh, so it it should uh, it we should, uh, the, the the space of public deliber deliberation should determine, let's say. How we will resolve the time of uh, uh, the temporality of today, which leaves very little time uh, for political deliberation to the common person. Um, you remember this uh, uh, element appearing in the magnum opus of uh, Ranciere, the Knights of Labor, where he says that uh, in um, in these hierarchical societies, uh, the non-democratic societies. There is uh, different temporalities for the ones that manage society, that they rule it, and the ones that uh, uh, implement the decisions of the rulers. So uh, the working class, for example, the proletarians, have the temporality of working hardly during the day and then taking in the night some rest uh, so they can work to, to again tomorrow, while the rulers have all the leisure in the world for during the day and in the time they have the time to think about politics, to implement the politics, to, to take decisions. And so Rassier suggests that the revolutionary uh, proletarian is not the one that uh, fights on the barricades, but is the one that uh, re reclaims this temporality of deliberation, of philosophy, etc., in the night. So uh, in, in my view, somehow uh, politics is uh, going to do something like that. And um, connecting with, with the element that you say to resolve uh, issues like class issues, gender issues and this, I, I think that already we see an answer given to this by the people in the ANS in Rojava, but also in the people of Zapatista, where we see a, an almost dialectic type of relationship between uh, direct democratic participatory processes and then uh, feminism, ecology, it, it were, these were issues that were not uh, top, at the top of the agendas, neither of the EZLN, neither of the Kurdish movement, but nonetheless uh, in the process of implementing uh, local autonomy, implementing uh, the, this in, uh, interconnected federalist type of structures, that uh, the gender has come, the feminism has come uh, at the, the top layer, uh, the ecological question. Uh, for example, in, in Rojava, there is the Make Rojava Green again, there is uh, all these talk, all this deliberation of how they will detach them, their economy from the oil economy and into a more sustainable types of, la of uh, life, etc. So I think that the solution to resolving uh, such, uh, um, of such conflicts will come from uh, the instauration of uh, participatory institutions that give 
uh, the space, as Hannah Arendt says, uh, of the people to act as citizens. Because today we don't have such space where you can act as citizens. There is a space that you can act as mob, there is space that you can act as consumer, but there is not the space uh, politically, but also uh, uh, spatially speaking, there is not the space. So, but again, like Castoriadi says, there is no magic uh, cure for this. We have seen, for example, the, the authoritarian communist societies that they suggested that they'll resolve first these differentiations, for example, the class differentiations, in order to give um, the power later. It did not uh, work, so it should go somehow the, the other way around. And regarding a small note on the expert knowledge, uh, as I see it, um, it will not be. Such, I remember one argument made by Slavoj Žižek that uh, direct democracy will consume all our time because we we'll have to discuss every single issue of how we'll produce a pen, a laptop, a cars, how we'll design our cities, but more of a, a type of people gathering and creating a framework of coexistence. And then uh, committees will be established that they will work into implementing this uh, framework into practice. And there will be a popular control on this. For example, in the ANES, in Rojava, uh, each commune has uh, six committees. The, the, the deal, each one of them would separate uh, a set of issues. And so in the commune, uh, the community gathers, uh, create this type of uh, framework that they want to live in. And then each com committee uh, takes uh, uh, care of uh, uh, bringing this into down-to-earth uh, proposals. And then again, this gets back to the de communal deliberation to be agreed upon and set into work. And here comes also the, uh, the, the say the, 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 what you say, multi-level chain. So uh, the, the taking care of the, the daily tasks of these people that work in these committees is being taken over by the whole community. So the, their personal things do, do not stay back. Their work, their children, etc. They are being taken care of by uh, the, the community. In a sense, communal luxury, like uh, Christine was saying. I find 
something that is problematic, but if you just try to critique the organization of society, but don't get into the form, actually a real organization and also in the way of consuming our produce, you know, energy and material as a basic technology. Because what you said the hippies, okay, uh, the people that are not hippies, but the reality is that there is a level of insustainability in our cities that uh, is crucial. So the necessity actually of living in small scale it's not just a choice, it's also if you want a kind of a burden from So I will be respective you know, that that's a new from the experience that are trying to reimagine, you know, like for example with civil technologies and other scales, etc. Because they are I think that they are mostly uh, uh, the scarcity of resources, we can see now you know, what they are bringing us. So I don't know you maybe you would like to cover it. So if there is no time. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's see if it's a great machine. Why not? Maybe if he can say something in two minutes and then uh, yeah. our time is going to be great. Okay, no, because there are a lot of things, but uh, yes, maybe to cover at least two or three things that I think are important. So, first of all, to clarify, I think what you said is very uh, important and. Um, uh, what I uh, tried to say is not that it's uh, the small is uh, beautiful, like the phrase goes, it's not important. Of course, I totally agree with that, that uh, we have to rethink uh, technology, we have to, tr to rethink consumer patterns, etc. Uh, it's also a, a more democratic when we think smaller scales, etc., and uh, where co communities can manage them directly. For example, I have written on this in the past, for example, nuclear energy is uh, genuinely anti-democratic. In a sense, it, pre, pre, uh, it requires a type of a militarized structures that can uh, uh, diachronically can uh, manage it. Uh, we cannot imagine a, a federation of communes managing a power plant, while um, like small-scale uh, renewable sources can be managed. Of course, this is important, but uh, what I mean is this imaginary of autarky, of kind of cutting yourself off all the evils of society and living in a small bubble uh, to, pro to, prevent, to pro protect yourself, kind of like uh, uh, Rousseau and uh, Emil, Emil's, uh, kind of tr trying to preserve the pristinity of uh, humans. So I'm problematized with this and not with the need to think of uh, small-scale sustainability uh, de uh, decisions. So uh, as regarding to how a gent is prepared for assemblies, uh, it's not so clear, or I don't remember now if Kostiradis or Bookchin refers to it uh, in length somewhere, but uh, for example in, uh, in, the, in the communes of Rojava there is a, a committee that prepare it uh, on the basis of what has been already decided uh, on previous assemblies, so I can imagine that something somehow like that. Also like, uh, for example, the assemblies of political collectives. In uh, Greece, in Athens, in Thessaloniki, or in other places, also some people prepare an agenda for the next assembly of the collective based on the base of what has been uh, determined before in the previous assembly, and then maybe some of the participants in the assembly can add some things to the some items to the. Uh, the and, and finally, about the binding decisions, um, I'm reminded of one uh, commentary by Bookchin that he says that uh, if we 
a way for a, a society based on consensus by every, that everyone will agree, then we speak of the complete annihilation of society. Society will be un, uh, will not be able to function. So there has to be in, a, in some sort of another a majority decision. So when uh, several communities group and uh, their their citizens agree via their uh, via majority decisions via the communal assemblies on a, some set of rules, this will imply, imply on everyone. So, for example, when the Zapatistas, uh, through their communal assemblies, decided that they'll ban the usage of alcohol and drugs, this has been made bi binding also to those that disagree with these decisions. But the community, uh, all the communities, the majority of them have decided that this usage is bad for them, regardless of what we think. I can personally disagree, but it, since the majority has decided it, with all the bad and with all the positive, uh, somehow has to be respected. So I think that this is the need. So we, if we decide as a federation that we don't want to extract oil, and then one group decided, okay, we will nevertheless uh, extract oil, uh, we have to have to some kind of mutual agreement because this will uh, impact the, the other communities as well. Let's see what you Sorry, please.